Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into the fascinating world of apistogrammas. In this beginner care guide we will cover everything you need to know about setting up a tank for them, understanding their behavior, covering their basic needs and even breeding those beautiful fish. Apistogrammas, often referred to as epistos, are diverse and colorful group of dwarf chiclets native to the rivers and streams of South America. These fascinating fish are very popular in our hobby due to their incredible diversity and unique behavior. There are over 90 recognized species of epistos, each with stunning colors, patterns and shapes. Of course, we cannot cover all of them or even most of them. But in this video, I will try to summarize the overall needs of Apistogramma family. Apistogrammas are very common choice for community tanks. They are generally peaceful, but are also territorial, especially during breeding. It's best to keep them in pairs or in small groups with more females for each male. It's important to note that epistos exhibit different behaviors depending on their species. Some are more aggressive, while others are very peaceful community fish. These intelligent fish are also capable of complex social interactions and can even establish hierarchies within their groups. They are mostly occupying lower and middle parts of the tank, so they might be a good candidate for a display fish for your tank. Now that we have better understanding of apistogrammas, it's time to look into the details of how to care for those dwarf chiclets. First things first, let's talk about setting the environment for your epistos. These fish are native to the Amazon, so recreating their natural habitat is crucial, starting with the tank size. Obviously, the bigger the better, but Depending on the species, you might be okay with 100 liters for a pair or smaller if you're only creating temporary breeding tank for them. If you are planning to keep more of them, you should definitely go much bigger, 200 liters and more. Try to provide them with some swimming space and most crucial, plenty of hiding spots. Apistos love to have some places to hide because this makes them feel safe and helps them to deal with stress. So, use your driftwood, rocks and live plants to create caves and darker shaded areas. This also helps with their territorial nature, so if you have a bigger tank and more apistos, try to create natural territorial boundaries for them. This way it will be easier for them to respect their own territory in the tank. For substrate you should definitely go for sand, because apistos love to dig and sift through it, and some of them are actually using sand to clean their grills. Another thing to remember is that you don't have to go crazy with lighting. Epistos can be shy sometimes and if your tank is very bright, it might stress them out. To help with that, you can also add lots of floating plants to create some shade for them. And lastly, it helps to use lots of botanicals like oak, peach of cartapa leaves or elder cones. This will not only fill your tank with beneficial tannins, but mimic their natural environment, make the water a little darker, and in my opinion it really looks cool. And of course it's also very beneficial for water parameters. And regarding water parameters, apistogrammas thrive in soft water with slightly acidic pH ranging from 6 to 7. 
temperature should be around 24 to 27 degrees Celsius. What is especially important is a good water quality, so it's a good idea to invest in big enough filtration for your tank. To help maintaining the best possible water quality, remember about regular water changes. This is especially important because apistos are very sensitive to high ammonia and nitrite levels. Apistogrammas sometimes can be picky eaters, so provide them with a balanced diet with highest quality flake or pellet foods. But definitely supplement their diet with live or frozen food like brine shrimp, daphnia or glassworms. This will enhance their coloration and overall health. And now let's dive into the one of the most exciting aspects of apistogramma care, breeding. To breed apistogrammas successfully, you need to remember about few basic points. First, look for a male and female that show vibrant colors and appear healthy. Induce them to the breeding tag at the same time to prevent aggression and arguments about territory. It also helps a lot to condition the parents with live foods, so the female can produce much more eggs. To induce breeding, you can try to raise the temperature a few degrees and slightly lower the pH. Of course, do it very slowly, not to put them into shock. Another thing to encourage breeding is to provide them with a flat surface or a cave such as a coconut shell, ceramic plate or a flat rock for the female to lay her eggs on. After the female has laid her eggs, the male will fertilize them immediately. In most cases, apistogrammas are fantastic parents. Right after spawning, the female will guard the eggs while the male defends the territory. Once the fry will hatch, both parents will continue to care and protect their offspring. But this one depends on the type of the apistos that you have. In some cases, only the female will guard their young. And remember, this is the time when both parents and especially female becomes much more aggressive. So take this into consideration. At this point, it's also extremely important to keep the breeding tank clean and maintain excellent water quality through regular water changes and gentle filtration. Feeding the fry can also be a little problematic, as they are initially quite small and need really tiny food particles. You can use dedicated fry food, sometimes even in liquid form, uh, powdered flakes, but I always go for infusoria as their first meal. And as they grow, I gradually introduce live baby brine shrimp. To increase your chances of successfully rising the fry, you may want to consider setting up a separate breeding tank. This will provide a control environment and prevent other tank mates from eating eggs or fry. Don't get discouraged if it fails for the first time or even second, this is absolutely normal. Apisto parents just need to have a little bit experience. With this kind of approach I was able to breed four different types of apistos plus German blue rams and some nanakaras. So the system seems to be working fine for many small chicklets. In summary, caring for apistogrammas requires some attention. But with little effort you can successfully keep and even breed them yourself. Start with creating an environment that mimics their natural habitat, provide them with lots of hiding spots, maintain stable water conditions, offer a balanced diet and they will thrive in your tank. 
and if you will keep the water really clean they can even breed for you and show you full spectrum of fascinating behavior.